Ke moi he nimeni on Tino Venemoinen Pai Suomen Tasavalta Pai Finland. You can call me Finland. My boss wants me to make an introduction video for the rest of the world. And I know a little bit about technology. I mean, you know, I make cell phones. Ooh, hoo, hoo, fancy, fancy. But a video is not really a thing that I understand very well. I got my best friend, Estonia, to help me with that. Say hi, Estonia. Hello. <laughs> Estonia is my video editor. He has all this incredible high-tech equipment and I am just so lost. But we thought that a good way to make an introduction video would be some getting to know you kind of questions. So Estonia is going to ask me some of those now. I am going to be turning 95 in December. I'm kind of a young nation. Iceland is younger than me, but I have been around for a little bit more than a thousand years, I think. Yeah, that's about right. A little bit more than a thousand years. So, music. My country's chief musical export is black metal, similar to Norway. A lot of my friends, we make a lot of black metal because it is very dark here in the winter, and I guess people get depressed. But I don't, I don't really like black metal. It's just so depressing, and it's so dark here already, we don't need to bring the lights down any further. Actually, the band I've been listening to the most recently is Hapo Radio. I guess they're just Swami Rock, yeah, they're just rock. They have good singers. Uh, I just, I just like them. <laughs> Moomins! Oh, I love the Moomins. They're so cute. Oh, uh, they started in, I think, the 50s or 60s. They're so cute. And, and, and I know it's just a children's cartoon, but they exemplify all that is best about Finland. And they have these cute morals, and I can show them to Peter. He wants to watch the English version. And there is an English version, and it still has the morals. That is what is important, the morals. Yes, absolutely. A lot of people are aware of this wife thing with Sweden. I wish to clarify that I am, I am not a wife because I am a man and men are not wives because women are wives. And that, that is all I will say about that matter. In foreign relations, I guess that's kind of relationship, I try to always be nice to people because war is not a pleasant thing and generally to be as nice as possible to people and try to accept them for the way that they are is a good way to not have war. <laughs> that sounds silly, but it's true. Sports are okay. I generally prefer winter sports. I'm a good skier. The Nordic ski, if you've ever heard of that at the Olympics, uh, where they ski and they shoot guns. I'm good at that. I don't know if you saw the Summer Olympics, but my country, the outfit, it, uh, it was a really good outfit. I really liked it. I would have worn it, except it was basically a snow parka. So in my country, we are, we are winter people, I suppose you would say. I know there is a sort of a misconception in the world that I am I'm kind of um, a very passive nation because nowadays I am generally kind of neutral. I try not to get on anybody's bad side, but in my past, I've been a very, what is a polite way to say, badass? I don't know. When I was with Sweden, which was um, the first 800 years of my history, that's a long time, and during the latter half of that, Sweden was really, he liked to have some territorial confrontations, I guess you say, and I was there too. I mean, you know, there's actually, there used to be a prayer in the Germanic nations from the, I think, 30 years war? The one with the Protestants and the Catholics. I kind of get them confused. Protect us from the Hakkapelita, which was actually the Finnish cavalry. That's me, that's me, hee <laughs> So I was, actually, I was actually really badass, and I, I guess I really helped Sweden win a whole bunch of his battles. I feel accomplished about that. And then the war that everybody knows about is, of course, the Winter War, because at that time I was my own country. It was me and Russia about the same time as the Second World War. And it was, it was not, a, not a fun day, but it's okay, because I am still an independent nation, and I was never a part of the Soviet bloc. So I guess, I guess it worked out okay, and I learned how to ski. 
and I have some really nice guns from that time as well. So, moral of story, I am good at war, I do not like to do it laps. In Finland we like eating, eating is fun. My sister Tina, she's always complaining that she is overweight, which she is not, she is just has curves. It is, it is just because we all love to eat so much here, and a lot of people in other countries do not think our food is very good. I would say that we are sort of England of the Nordics, perhaps? When I'm at Sweden's house, we do not eat Finnish food very much. But my favorite, favorite kind of Finnish food is Sanmyaki. It is a kind of salted licorice. And they make that in other countries too, but nobody eats as much of it as I do. <laughs> it's not very popular because it's, it, it has a strong flavor. <laughs> And as sweets go, I guess it's not very sweet, but I guess they're more for me. <laughs> I actually get asked this question a lot, uh, like how did I feel about being a Viking or how do I feel about my Viking past? Well, <laughs> funny story, because I don't have one. I did obviously live at Viking times with, with, uh, next to Vikings. That was actually a little bit before I was living with Sweden and they were they were an interesting bunch. They, they like to kill things and burn things. I uh, stayed at home. I did some farming. I did some trading. I, you know, said hi to my neighbors every now and then. I may have made a few raids on the Swedish settlements, but I was not a Viking. That is actually not a, a dark hole in my past. I have no problem with that part of my history at all. Well, I think I have very clear about black metal. It's not my thing, but it's something that people like. And it is important to note Nordic black metal much better than American. I'm sorry, American black metal, they don't even try to sing. In Nordic, I mean, they cover it with lots of the <laughs> uh, static, that's what you say, right? The distortion, distortion, that's what it is. But they, they do sort of try to sing underneath, but that is, eh, eh, it's not really, not really my thing. Maybe ask Norway about that. But Eurovision, I have, I have strong feelings about Eurovision. First of all, uh, people in the countries, we should send songs that are in our own language. I mean, it's, uh, Eurovision is sort of like a celebration of culture of Europe, and I think that we should actually celebrate our culture instead of all singing English. No offense to England or America or any of those other, other countries, but it's boring language. It's hard too, it's real hard language. <laughs> but I, I think we should all speak in our own languages and I just, I feel sort of left out. I don't make it to the end very often. I guess I am just not good enough at English or something. The only time I won was in uh, 2006 and it was a metal group. Surprise, surprise, singing in English. They are one of my least favorite submissions from the last 10 years. But there you go, <sighs> no accounting for taste is there. Oh, lots of, lots of topic here. So Sweden is my next door neighbor. I lived with him for 800 years, which if you were paying attention earlier, 800 out of a thousand is a lot, three quarters. Is that right? That three quarters, more than three quarters of my life I live with Sweden. Nice guy. He has an alarming interpersonal manner. Eh, you get used to it, I guess. <laughs> Some people accuse me of Stockholm syndrome. It's ridiculous. I lived with Russia for a hundred years after I lived with Sweden, obviously. And at first, actually, it was, it was not so bad because I got to basically make all my own decisions and just like hail Tsar whenever he came over, but that was basically it. And then uh, they got a new Tsar who thought uh, that all of the Russian territories, and I guess there were a lot of them, wanted, he wanted them all to be more Russian, like a uh, unification or something like that. So he, he tried to make me learn Russian and all sorts of other things like that. And I did not really like that very much. And then they had their October Revolution in uh, 1917, that's right. And because we had Allegiance to, allegiance to Tsar, but not to the communist government, so we just left. It was not really that hard. I mean, Russia was like, okay, bye, see you later. And then we had that war, and we talked about that war before. But it is not a good idea to be always hostile 
to an enormous, very powerful country that lives right next door to you because that is just asking for trouble. So I try to be as nice to him as possible so that he does not get scary on me. Yeah, people think Sweden's scary? No. You have not met scary until you have met Russia. That's, oh my goodness. <laughs> ah. That leaves Norway and Denmark and Iceland. And actually, I rather like all of them. As Nordics, we're all fairly similar. We have same kind of religion, same kind of history, <laughs> same kind of flag. Out of all of us, I think Denmark is the most different because he just is loud. Uh, and then, I mean, I guess I am different because my language is so very different. To me, it is like they are speaking the same language. It's just that some of them, the intonation changes more, like singing or something. And so I, I guess some of them, they, they squish their words together. Uh, so it sounds very strange to me, but they are all very similar. We are all very similar. We have same interests. We have same climate. It's like, it is like we are family. Dysfunctional family, but family, I'll say. Germany. A lot of people, I guess, they don't actually know about this. But when I was having my winter war with Russia, first there was this winter war, and then there was a break, and then there was the continuation war, and they usually get sort of squished together. The reason for the continuation war was because Germany was having his Operation Barbarossa, and he said to me, we will give you, we will give you stuff. You can go get your territory back from Russia. And I said, oh yes, please, yes, please. And he gave me lots of very nice guns and all sorts of things like that. And we got our territory back from Russia and we stayed there. And he, he wanted me to attack Leningrad or something like that. I was like, I have no problem with Leningrad. Leningrad never did anything to me. So I just uh, took back Karjala and then I was done with it. And in the end, Russia took Karjala back from me again. And that was a sad day. But I have always found Germany to be a nice, upstanding sort of country. He helps people who are in need. He is a considerate nation. And during my trouble with Russia, I really needed that. And he was actually, I think, really the only nation in the world that would actually admit to helping me, I suppose. Uh, some of the other nations sent they sent volunteers, they sent skis, whatever, but they would not say they were helping because, oh no, my defend Russia. And it, was, it was sad because it was not my fault. Russia was just being mean. I don't know why Russia was being mean. Sometimes he does that. Yes, so that is, that is about Germany, sort of. Mostly about <laughs> Russia. <laughs> that is awful. I actually still speak a little bit of German. I speak lots of languages, Swedish, Finnish, Try not to speak Russian. I have to say, I feel that the world is just it is in a good place now. At least Europe is in a good place. I feel that we have been working together so well, and I hope that that continues in the future. And I, I really hope that the rest of the world can join us as well. I, Iraq has never done anything to me. Perhaps they can work with us as well. Maybe. Maybe the whole world can become a family like the Nordics have become a family.